Hey everybody, Mike here. Today we're doing a 63 foot by 35 foot pickleball court. So we're pouring a concrete slab. The, the owner's going to put a coating over this to, to me, dress it up, make it look like a pickleball court. Now I just want to say this video is sponsored by DeWalt and I want to show you how easily it is to screed the concrete for a slab this size using DeWalt's new power shift battery operated power screed. So you're going to get to see that in action today and just how easily that made the job for us doing this slab. Now we're getting the concrete down. Now our job was we're actually a sub on this job so the homeowner ca called a foundation contractor or general contractor that we do a lot of work for. The general contractor just calls us up and say, hey Mike, you know, I got this slab. I need you to go form it up, put the stego down, put the wire mesh down, double roll rebar around the edges, and then pour it, give it a nice broom finish, saw cut it. So that's what our part of the job is doing all that other stuff. Now the homeowner here, he was responsible for doing the sub base, so he got all the crushed rock, he got all the, like the retaining wall done with the with the rocks you see, he got all that done, he got all the permits, so we show up, you know, we put up the forms and then we take it from there. So we'll get the slab put in today, now I actually line up the concrete, you know, I figure the concrete, I line it up for what day I want, I call the pump guy and I line him up and then that's how all that all works and then here we are today. So we got four trucks coming, it's about 36 yards we figured. It's a little bit thicker in the middle. The slab does crown an inch and a half in the middle. The homeowner wanted it to crown a little bit so when it rains he doesn't have any puddles sitting on the slab it'll just kind of run off and the slab stays fairly dry. So we're going to get the first nine yards. We'll just dump it right out. We can figure, you know, if this is 35 feet wide, we know nine yards of concrete is going to go about 14 feet. So that's kind of how we how we attack this thing to begin with. Each each nine yards should go about 14 or 15 feet if the thickness if we got the thickness of the subgrade or the thickness of the slab right. Usually the first truck doesn't go quite as far as the the other trucks because it takes about a yard of concrete just to fill up the pump, you know, between the hopper, all the hose that's in the in the boom. It takes about a yard of concrete for that, so it doesn't go quite as far as you think it might, but in the end everything usually works out. So that's me with the grade stick. I'm going to shoot my pads based on you know the height of the center and this pad I'm shooting here will be an inch and a half higher than the two bys on the outside the perimeter and that's just you know the, the homeowner wanted to make sure he had at least four inches of concrete all around the outside of the perimeter but but what he did was he when he graded that crushed rock he just graded it flat so this is about five and a half six inches in the middle now here you you can see us I had the camera set way back so you get a really good view of everything. Luke's got the, the DeWalt power shift screed using their new battery technology. That's a 14 foot board on there. So we when we struck off the middle pad, we struck it off fairly wide so we could reach. And you can see how easy that is to pull down. Just slow and steady is how we use it. We could go a little faster. He, we generally use it about half throttle and then the reason for that is, you know, just like I said, slow and steady. That gives the guys raking concrete plenty of time to make sure they got the concrete raked at the right level. If you go too fast, you're just going to end up with some humps and dips no matter no matter whose power screed you use. But if you give the guys behind you enough time to rake the concrete to where it should be, then you come out with a really nice screeded slab. You can see how nice and smooth that goes. And then I'm I'm over there bow floating, so it's basically just down and back with the bow float. You don't see any any gaps under the bow float, so there's no dips in there. There's no humps. Both ends of the bow float touch. You can kind of see both ends touching, so they leave a line, and that means your screed is working just the way you need it to. So there, basically that's it. One truck down. That, you can see how fast that went. So we'll just go one truck at a time. We'll bang these right out one at a time. It only takes a few minutes 
Um, we could only back one truck up to the bump, pump truck anyway because the driveway was pretty narrow. I didn't I didn't bid or estimate this job either so the general contractor you know the homeowner here called up the general contractor they knew each other from way back I guess and the GC just gave him an estimated price on this based on you know a certain amount of details like slab thickness and stuff like that and then if it ends if it ends up taking more concrete than what they estimated you know it's also talked about that the homeowner will pay for the extra concrete So it's Darren's running the, the hose there on the boom, so it's just basically back and forth. You know, we take about a six to seven foot kind of swath as we pump, knowing we're going to go about 14, 15 feet, and then that just, you know, the guys behind him can rake it and get it to grade as best they can. That just keeps things moving nice and smooth, is just having a system down where, you know, the, the guy running the hose does the same thing every time, and then usually there's a, obviously there's always one guy behind the hose raking concrete what like what Luke and Eric are doing and just so happens today we got two guys raking it so they can get it really close Harvey's kind of floating out the edges there getting our grades and our and our pad around the edges top of two by four so five guys pouring this thing was 2205 square feet five guys pouring a slab like this actually makes it pretty easy I like that the Stego wrap, the Stego vapor barrier too, is the <laughs> kind of the same color, pretty close to the same color as Dewalt's color, so it kind of makes it like a Dewalt slab. <laughs> um, that's pretty cool. You can see the the power screed right here in front of you. Now they make the the actual battery part of the screed, so the handles, the battery part, the operating part, and you can use. They have adapters, so you can use just about anybody's screed board with their power screed. So we have a certain type of board we like. We like a triangular enclosed type of board. Some guys like L-shaped boards, which is fine. We got some of those too. This is just our preference. So we decided to use the adapters that fit this board, this 14-foot board. You can put a 12-foot board on here. You can put a 10-footer. You could put a 16-footer on here. Like that doesn't matter. It's just... Uh, the brand you can use different people's brands boards on here so if you already have an let's say you got an old power screed but the board's really good you don't want to change the board you don't have to go buy the whole thing again you could just buy the you know the handles the part the battery part like that and, and i'll have a link down in the description you guys can check out just what the cost is but we've used it now we've been using it now all summer on multiple slabs actually this is the same battery we've used this battery for weeks and we haven't had to recharge it for floors like this. And we, you know, we basically pour floors every day. But if you think about how many minutes it takes to get a floor like this screeded, I don't know, I didn't check it on this one, but I've checked it on some other ones. It's not, that, we're not actually using the battery very much. And we, you know, maybe, maybe 10 minutes total on this slab. So the battery's gonna last you a long, long time. And then, with the re the fast rechargers they have, you know, if you're doing super super uh, big slabs, you know, 15, 20,000 square foot slabs, then you're gonna want to have two batteries. But if you're just doing small stuff like this, you know, you just make sure you got enough charge to get get the job done. But you're gonna be just fine on residential stuff. Probably just getting one battery. So two trucks down, you can see just by looking at it, we're, we're a little bit over halfway, which is what we like to see. Third truck's in there, he's kind of mixing up. And again, Luke's running the screed, just slow and steady on the pullback. We like keeping that board flat too, like we don't tip it upwards, you know, and we, so the, the board's kind of cutting the concrete as it goes and then the two rakers, which are Darren and Eric right now, they're kind of keeping everything to grade. They're allowing for just a little bit of concrete build up behind the board so it's not low. But we don't want so much built up behind the board that it vibrates back down under the board. That's where you get in a little bit of trouble with things not being flat or level or whatever you want to call it. 
but this shows you right here that you can't see it in the video but you can use those power screeds even on something that has a slope as long as you're really careful and you know what you're doing and you understand you know about not giving it too much vibration or like if you can notice if something looks funny if something looks off in the slope you got to be able to notice stuff like that This is real early in the morning. This is like 6, we probably started at 6 a.m. So we're probably around 6.30 a.m. in the morning right now. Um, it's in the summer, in the middle of the summer in Maine. It gets really hot and humid. We've had days, this, today is going to actually hit 90 up here. Hot and it like 100% humidity. So it's super, it feels like it's 100 degrees. That's why we start super early in the morning, which I'm sure a lot of you guys do in the south anyway probably pretty normal for you our normal starting time for concrete is about 6 30 a.m but if we ask the batch man to come in and, and get concrete on the job at 5 30 or 6 he doesn't care he gets his trucks back a little faster that way another cool thing is just having a pump operator that kind of knows what he's doing he helps make the job go so much smoother when he's standing right there kind of paying attention and he's understanding just what you want to do how you want to get the concrete laid out how much how fast all that stuff uh, really plays a big part in how smooth this pour goes because uh, if he's going too fast and he's not really paying attention it makes the guy kind of handling the hose his job a lot harder and then the two guys raking the concrete behind the hose right now, the closer they can get it right to grade and not have it too high or too low is just makes the job go that much faster when you go to screed the concrete. Now the wire mesh has these chairs under it. I don't know if you can see them. I think you can kind of see them in the video. If you go back a little bit, you can see them a little better. So the, the wire mesh is all chaired up like two inches. That's why we don't have to pull it up. So it's going to stay up about where it needs to be. Now those chairs, those aren't cheap. Those are pretty expensive. Uh, they're like a dollar a lineal foot, and those are five footers in there. I don't know how many we put in here. We probably put a hundred of them in here. So 500 lineal feet of chairs, you know, at a buck is $500 in chairs just to get the wire mesh up off the poly. Now on a lot of jobs, a lot of smaller ones, you'll see us just pulling it up into the concrete. And it's not that big a deal. It stays up. Once you pull it up and then you walk back on it, you get all the, all the rocks from the concrete underneath that wire. It stays up into the concrete pretty good is what we found. This is really the first, what I would call, pickleball court we've ever done. <laughs> we've done a lot of basketball courts over the past, but never like a true pickleball court. So this is kind of a first for us. Now, they come in, I guess, and the homeowner hires a guy to come in, and he puts a what's like a rubberized coating over this whole thing afterwards. So we're going to give it a broom finish. We'll saw cut some joints in this, but the guy that does the rubberized coating said he kind of preferred a broom finish so his coating sticks to the concrete a little bit better. So basically, just like a sidewalk finish, a pool deck finish, we'll, we'll float this all out nice, and then we'll pull the broom over it. And that'll be in another video. All I got is the porn in this one. So, you know, if you haven't subscribed yet, you know, come back and subscribe. It was kind of cool the way we did that. And the, I used a special new type of power trowel instead of getting on this by hand on knee boards and floating it all out i used this really cool power trowel to go over the whole thing and then we run ran the broom across it and it worked really good so make sure you subscribe and come back and watch that i'll try to come out with that on the very next video but that that was that was a pretty interesting uh, little adventure on that that was the first time we ever did it with that power trowel too so again, you can see Luke, slow and steady, 14 foot board. Everything works out really nice. A uh, guy can come right behind you, bow floating, and just push it and pull it down back once. 
Everything looks really smooth. The smoother and better we can get this Beaufort job, the much easier it's going to be to finish the concrete is what we feel. So we like doing a really nice job with the bow floating. And then we're on to the fourth truck. Fourth truck's in there. He's mixing up now. It looks like we're going to have plenty of concrete, which is always a good thing when you're doing slabs this size. Yeah, you can kind of see the chairs there. They're holding up the wire mesh pretty good. One good thing about early this morning was it was kind of a little overcast. It was a little foggy this morning. It's like 100% humidity, but it was a little foggy, so the, the sun isn't out quite yet. And even if it was out, it would be so low, the trees would kind of be blocking it, and it, we'd still be, be in the shade a little bit. But being overcast kind of helped us with this pour a little bit, too. It gave us a little bit more time. Because we didn't, there wasn't a ton of time, if I remember, on the finishing by the time we got done pouring this until we had to go right back and start finishing it. So I want to know what you guys think about the screed number one down in the comments. Let me know what you think if it's something you think would make your job easier. If you don't have one, are you thinking of getting one? Um, we like this. We like the vibration on it. The battery, like I said, the battery works really good. The weight is about the same as any of the other ones that we've ever used. It's not, it doesn't really feel any heavier. I think you could use this with a lower slump. Now we use water reducer in our concrete so we can pour a six, seven slump with our concrete and it doesn't weaken it. So obviously with the slumps that we use, this, this screeding is really easy. I feel like if you're pouring a little stiffer, maybe for driveways, if you're doing like a five slump, this thing's going to work just as good because of the vibration it has, the weight it has. Uh, you're going to be just fine with that. But let me know what you guys think. You know, Luke's ran the Luke's ran the the power screed for the whole slab. He's doing a good job with it. And then uh, again, come on back. Let me know what you think. I'm going to leave the rest of this video so you can just kind of listen to it. I'll leave the volume up. And then let me know what you think down in the comments, guys. All right, so here's a little bit of a close-up of the screed. Um, let me know, again, how you guys think. There's multiple different attachments, like I said, for the screed boards. And I'll have a link so you can check that out down in the description below. But I just wanted to thank you guys again for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. We'll see you on the next video.